Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris is off riding his bike in the MS bike ride, and so we wish him well on his ride. At least he has cooler weather for this, for these few days, yesterday and today. So we wish him well on that ride. And so since he is gone today, um, we are happy to welcome Pastor Barb, who will be serving as our minister today and offering the sermon. And we don't have a lot of announcements, but we do have one from Pastor Ed, who is um, announcing from his wife, Cheryl. Yeah, this is from Cheryl. Um, Hasid, the, uh, our refugee, uh, is here. He's really excited. He passed his driver's test. He's got an apartment. We're going to be moving him in today. Mike and Marilyn Connolly are going to take up furniture from here. We're going to go with design. There's some donations of furniture there. And where he's staying, they're going to bring up the stuff there. So he's doing real well. He's got a job and working. He's got a loaner car uh, for a while. So because the transportation has been tough, you know, he gets works at 9 o'clock at night. So everything's going well. Uh, if you have any questions, after the service, the script cards, you can pick them up or, or if you want to make a little donation to support him. But he's an excited guy. And someone gave him an, a U.S. Air Force cap, you know. <laughs> And while well, he was in the Air Force, three years of training, five years of service, if he eventually gets his green card, he could be flying flight for life in our mountains. You know, all this experience, you're rescuing people. So um, really excited and speaks perfect English and someone came up and congratulated him. Thanks for your service. <laughs> and so, uh, great guy, but that's it. And Marlon, got uh, something to say? No, not now. <laughs> um, this isn't exactly an announcement, but yesterday, some of the M&M's, members of the M&M's Children's Choir participated. We, were, we have been invited to um, lead dances, lead the, lead the dances around the Maypole in Estes Park at the Scandinavian Festival. And we had about 60 people in a huge circle around the Maypole, and the M&M's were helping to lead those dances, and you would have been really proud of them. It was a gorgeous day because it wasn't too hot, and the Scandinavian Festival is going on today, so you can still go up if you would like to see. There are dancers from, dancers there from Lindsberg, Kansas, and there are singers, and there are booths, and the M&Ms won't be there today, but you can still enjoy Scandinavian festivities. So enjoy the afternoon, whatever you do, and with that, we will proceed with our prelude.
rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we too have Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. 
join in the prayer of the day as printed in your bulletin. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from the fifth chapter of Galatians. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love become slaves to one another. But for the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour, devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, adultery, sorcery, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its patience and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Here ends the reading. The chancel choir will be leading the song, please sing the bold parts.
Stand for the gospel acclamation found on page 205 in your hymnal. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you. Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel according to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from the triune God. When I was a kid taking a civics class, was required of all ninth graders. Our teacher drilled into us the difference between freedom from and freedom for, and why understanding that difference was essential for a healthy democracy. I can't help but wonder what things would be like in our country today if that difference was still stressed. How different things might be if both freedom from and freedom for were regarded equally. Our teachers stressed that if we were not responsive responsible citizens, concern for the common good, then democracy could die in America. I think of that teacher's warning when I hear thoughtful people say that our democracy is in peril. And I also think of Martin Luther's well-known paradoxical statement. A Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none, and a Christian is a dutiful servant, subject to all. Freedom from is a useful and legitimate form of liberation. Who doesn't want to be free from the tyranny of the state, from the power of guilt and shame, from stereotypes and limitations imposed upon individuals and groups, from fear of the future, from the bondage to a painful past, and from the impossible demands 
of religious laws. Freedom from tyranny of the state, from authoritarianism, is so much taken for granted that many have lost sight of just how precious it is and how much sacrifice has been, is, and will be needed to preserve it. Just look at how bravely the Ukrainians are fighting for their freedom. But for so many, freedom has become freedom to do whatever we want, whenever and however we want to do it, with little regard for others, and freedom from moral restraint and rampant individualism are the enemies of a healthy society. We see it in the destruction of many families, where everyone is too busy with their own agenda to have time together. We've seen families at restaurants, all the members on their own personal devices, instead of talking to one another. We see it in the us versus them mentality, the rich and powerful feeling free to abuse and ignore the weaker and poorer, in the fact that persons with guns are now the leading cause of death for children and teens. In the living for the moment without regard for the past or the future, and in the widespread refusal to sacrifice for the common good. So many of the problems in our country have at their root the abuse of freedom. One is freed from in order to be free for. General Omar Bradley put it well when he said this, freedom, no word was ever spoken that has greater, that has held greater hope, demanded greater sacrifice, needed more to be nurtured, blessed more than given, or to come closer to being God's will on earth. The meaning of Christian freedom has been an issue for the Christian church from its earliest days. Do Christians have to follow certain laws to be right with God? Is faith alone without discipleship just cheap grace, as Bonhoeffer claimed? In 19th century American Lutheranism, there were so-called happy Danes and sad Danes. The happy Danes danced and played cards. The sad Danes said doing so was sinful. Well, the nature of Christian freedom is what underlines our scripture readings for today. In the gospel reading, Jesus extends an invitation to follow him, to become his disciples, and they are free to accept or ignore that invitation. But their choices have consequences. Jesus tells them that their choice to look back at what they left behind has consequences. They are unable to experience the joy that comes from putting God first in their lives, the joy of being part of God's reign on earth. A New Testament professor commenting on this passage wrote this, the radical demands of discipleship 
require that every potential disciple consider the cost, give Jesus the highest priority in life, and having committed oneself to discipleship, move ahead without looking back. And Bonhoeffer wrote about the cost and the joy of discipleship and said this, Happy are they who know that discipleship simply means the life which springs from grace, and that grace simply means discipleship. In other words, it is God's spirit within us that enables us to say yes to the invitation to follow Jesus. The Apostle Paul's life work was proclaiming the freedom that we have as Christians and the responsibility that goes with that God-given liberty. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery he declares. When Harriet Tubman made her escape from a Maryland plantation, she described what it felt like when she realized that she had crossed the Mason-Dixon line to freedom in Pennsylvania. She said this, when I found I had crossed the line, I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person. There was such a glory over everything. The sun came like gold through the trees and over the fields. And I felt like I was in heaven. Paul wants us to have such a joy in the freedom that Christ has achieved for us that we experience a glory over everything. But sometimes that's easier to proclaim than to believe. It's as if we all have something of a sad gain in us. Reason and pride prefer the righteousness of the law to the righteousness of faith. This is what Paul calls the yoke of slavery. It's not that the law of God is bad. That's not what Paul is fighting against. Rather, it's that all too stubborn assumption that God's acceptance of us must depend on our behavior. Such a way of thinking leads only to a recognition of our shortcomings, our sinfulness, and one is left a slave to sin, death, the wrath of God, the flesh. But God's gracious gift of freedom, freedom from the demands of the law, is not a license to do as we please. For, Paul writes, you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves of one another. Abuse of freedom, self-indulgence, leads to what Paul called the work of the flesh. And he gives examples, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, and carousing. Such works of the flesh are as obvious in our land today as they were in the Roman Empire of Paul's day. And the disaster that they cause 
in terms of destruction of oneself and others is only too clear. Christ has set us free from the tyranny of the law and the flesh so that we might be freed for living by the Spirit of God. And note the fruit the Spirit produces in our lives when we're not led by selfish desires, but by God's Holy Spirit. Love, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Such fruit enriches both the individual and the community. It fosters joy. And we're called to live by the Spirit and not the desires of the flesh. And we're called to do that not only within our congregation, but also within the world in which we live. Now, if you don't feel the presence of the Spirit, I suggest you do three things. First, don't beat yourself up about it. We all have times when we do not sense God's presence within us. Second, set aside some time in the morning and in the evening for prayer. Listening, not just asking. And third, talk with a trusted Christian friend. Such conversation can help us see ourselves more clearly, can see why God seems absent. For freedom, Christ has set you free. That means we always start with the gospel message, which says that we are not and never have to be achievers before God. We are simply recipients of God's loving giving. For freedom, Christ has set you free. Free for being bound by the law of love. Freed for building up. Freed for living by the Spirit. Freed for being guided by the Spirit in all you say and do. God is with us in all our decision making, calling us to leave the old paths behind and to follow Christ boldly without looking back. We can give up control of our destiny. We can dare to be guided by the Spirit along the path that leads to new life in Christ. I recently came across two verses from Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church that I think can be a slogan for our time. It says this, keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. You want to say that with me? Keep alert. Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be courageous. Be strong. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Let all that you do be done in love. For freedom Christ has set us free. Let us celebrate with joy the gift and to use our freedom responsibly. Let us freely rededicate ourselves to be loving servants, living by, guided by God's Holy Spirit, the comforter, the enabler, the bringer of peace, and the power to do God's will. To that triune God be gratitude and glory. Amen. If you can, please stand.
for hymn number 810, O Jesus, I Have Promised. join in confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, set the faith of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. 
Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, guide all who govern, that they may place the good of their citizens over self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nation with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or con conflict. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying, especially Anne, Pastor Graham, Sonia, Bob, Kathy, Becky, Dennis. Uphold those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving compassion as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence, God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoke, spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. You may be seated while we collect our morning offering. I skipped a piece. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts. Whoops. Here we go. God of abundance, you, you have set before us a plentiful harvest as we feast on your goodness and constantly your And us to bear The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places 
give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to each of them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Let's together pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we have received, strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for us, both friend and stranger, that all may come to heaven. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.